Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Marvel's What If 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Now today we are taking a look at the big bad boy himself, the Hydra Stomper. And also Steve Rogers. This is a two-pack. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, there's quite literally not much to it. It's just this top cover. Don't worry though, when it comes to shipping, you're not just going to get sent an unprotected clam tray. It comes in a fully printed shipper. Front and center, Hydra Stomper and Steve. Then in the background, a smattering of images from the show. Zombie Hunter Spidey, T'Challa Star-Lord, The Watcher, Thor, and of course, Captain Carter. Now, I thought initially when I unboxed this out of the shipper, oh, it's not going to be that big, surely. But boy was I wrong, there is no wasted space here in the clam tray whatsoever, he is huge. But surprisingly, he's not overly heavy. First in hand impressions, they're pretty positive. But what about Steve, I hear you asking? He comes packaged separately in his own really cute teeny tiny Hot Toys box. I love this. Front and center, a glossy image of Steve from the show. In the background, more screenshots. Black Widow, Captain Carter, Zombie Hunter Spidey, Hydra Stomper, and Zombie Cap. Around the back, a bunch of warnings and legal info, plus this kind of matte textured finish on the surface. Underneath, we do have an image of the figure himself, and around the front, an open window for a sneak preview of the figure inside. Now, I personally have wanted a pre-serum Steve forever. And finally, we have one. Now, I wasn't looking for an animated version, but you all know what that means. Head swaps are coming. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of the accessories for both Steve and Hydra Stomper laid out in the like box and take a closer look at everything they come with. Starting off with Steve's display base first, it's done in the usual Hot Toys hexagonal style. Up top, for some reason, an image of Hydra Stomper. Why not Steve? Not entirely sure, but I like the way it looks. It's a cracked multiverse, and it's very colorful. Up front, Steve Rogers, plus up top, a regular crotch grabber. The Hydra Stomper does come with his own display base of sorts, but it's not a traditional base by any means, it's full custom. It's this translucent plastic L-shaped bracket. Around the front it does say the Hydra Stomper, but it's really hard to read. It's this very thin layer of paint and it's almost translucent itself on clear plastic. Like I said, it's not super legible. Up top we do have this cup section and a peg. You will see how that comes into play later on. I know, not an accessory. Technically, this is part of his overall look. It's his jetpack. Now, it's very sizable. Of course it is. It needs to propel the Hydra Stomper through the air. It's painted suitably well. There's some oil stain washes in the crevices. You've got multiple layers of dirt and grime. There's chipping. There's speckling. I like the way this looks. You also have some detail for the thrusters, but... No blast effects, and I'm not sure why. They specifically included a flight stand for a flight pose, but no blast effects like they include with Mandalorians and pretty much everyone else that has a jetpack. You do have some moving pieces where you'd slide Captain Carter's shoes into, and up top, a handle that she can grip onto. If you're wondering how to install this on the Hydra Stomper, it's really easy. We do have one screw and some pegs. Plus this panel, you simply remove it, plug this on, screw it in, then pop the panel back in place. It's held on magnetically. This thing is actually really clever. Yes, it looks like a control panel, pretty simple. There's a readout on the front and the doors that would have swung open. There isn't much paint to speak of, but... 
The way it works and what it does is very clever. This slides into the chest area and it becomes the LED for the arc reactor. Plus, it's frosted white plastic, so when you do plug this on, it looks lit up even without the lights turned on. I will show you exactly what the heck I'm talking about when we get the stomper out here. Now we do get an array of hands for Steve, pointing hands, open palm hands, a saluting hand and a gripping hand, but no closed fists, and I'm not sure why, it's a puzzling choice. There is some leather-like grain and texture on the surface, plus some wrinkling. Now, I don't think they're painted, and they do look a little bit glossy. I would have liked potentially some more accessories like blast effects, but giving Steve some hands, I guess that gets the job done. What we are going to do now, though, is get the Stomper himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Granted, though, that is a bit of a lie. He does have his jetpack on and his antenna, plus his legs are quite clearly in a pose. Did I pick that pose? No, it looks kind of funky. Also, I can't do anything to change it. What the hell does that mean? Well, we have a lot to discuss, don't you worry. For the most part though, I'm still pretty happy. He's huge, the ginormous size means he's got a lot of presence. I dig the proportions, I like the finish with the green and the scratching on the surface. The LEDs help this guy stand out, not that he really needed any help doing that anyway. Plus, you can pop Steve inside. Speaking of which, here he is, and for the most part, even from a distance, I can tell that he fits the bill. He's a shrunk down, scrawny, lanky looking version of Steve, pre-serum. Now, when I said earlier that I've wanted a pre-serum Steve forever, this isn't quite what I had in mind. I was thinking live action. But this is the first one we've received from Hot Toys, and so far so good, he's accurate to how he looked in the show. I'm fairly certain it's a brand new body specific to him, and his clothes are practically falling off him. He is that skinny. For those thinking, Justin, wait a minute, you never showed us how to install the jetpack. Well, here that is. Luckily, it's pretty simple. The first thing you want to do is slide the jetpack in place, exposing that screw. Then bring in your screwdriver of choice and screw the screw in. The first time I think I've ever said that on camera. Then you want to bring in the panel that you removed earlier. It's magnetic. It uses that screw to snap in position. Speaking of magnets and screws and how they work together, the control panel works in the exact same way. It uses the pre-existing screws and magnets in the back of the panel to literally hold it on there really securely. Securely is exactly how I describe this connection, it's his antenna. You push it in all the way until it clicks and unless you pull it out, it's not gonna go anywhere. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the helmet first. Now I have had to frame this slightly differently than usual, just due to his enormous size, but you all already know that. I've told you, he's very, very big. The helmet is quite chonky. It's also quite retro classic looking. Something along the lines of the old school comic book Mark I with the antenna and the big eyes, but I dig it. They are also illuminated in blue, but if you turn them off, the eyes are frosted plastic. He doesn't look completely dead. Thank you, Hot Toys. This is awesome. You can flip open the top panel, and on the inside, there's some detail. Now, you can flick off the switch for the arc reactor, and it's done in the same way. Frosted white plastic, such a nice touch. The overall finish is pretty much exactly the same as the jetpack. A base layer of military green, plus some chipping, pitting, and dirt and grime for good measure. Around the back, now that we have the jetpack installed, it looks like one seamless thing. It almost looks like it was always part of the Hydra Stomper. If you didn't have to screw it in, you probably wouldn't know that it was a separate piece. Now, the finish is pretty much identical between the jetpack and the body, like I said before. So, in terms of a color match, yeah. 
it's on point. Let's be honest, he looks cooler with the arc reactor on. I know I gushed about the frosted plastic, but LEDs, they're kind of magical. Now he looks even more alive. You do have a army star on one side and C-15 on the other. I do like how they have all these rungs, almost like it's a ladder for Steve to climb up and inside the Hydra Stomper. Now down here for the belt area, I guess, you can remove this panel and that will come into play a little bit later for the flight stand. His arms are an asymmetrical design and they're really big and chunky. You do have this machine gun barrel and another barrel down below. His fingers are also fully articulated. So, fingers crossed. See what I did there? Fingers, fingers crossed. I'm so sorry. But they should be nice and poseable. I do dig the little rivets along the edge. Very industrial feeling. Now, the overall finish. Y'all already know I'm running out of ways to describe the weathered green, but... It looks like an old school army tank. Or maybe something like a Willis Jeep. That's of the era. Yeah, that works too. Now on this side, we don't have a machine gun. We've got this kind of rail section. It almost looks as though something is missing because there's an empty pin slot. But as far as I'm aware, that's how it's supposed to be. Nothing is missing. There's also some silver chipping on the gunmetal sections. I forgot to mention that before. There are some darker blackish gunmetal pieces and they're weathered too. Coming down to the legs, they're painted in the exact same way as the upper torso. No surprise to anyone. You do have a star and USA on one thigh. It looks like it's been chipped away. Suitably well worn. I do like the rivets along the edges of the thighs, like I said with the arms, very industrial. Then you do have those rungs continuing up for Steve to climb in. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember Hot Toys billing this guy, the two-pack version of the Stomper, as a power pose. From everything I read, including on the box, this guy was billed as a collectible figure. So if you're calling it a figure, Hot Toys, I expect figure articulation. But unfortunately, no. His legs are fixed in position. This is a power pose through and through. I have been stooged. Now, maybe if I'd done some more reading and looked closer at the pics, okay, I would have known. If this doesn't bother you, all the power to you, but it bothers me because the pose is funky. This leg is sticking forward, this leg is facing back, so in a neutral pose, he takes up way more depth and width. Plus, in a flight pose, I don't think it really works there either. However, it is all subjective. So if you're thinking, yes, this is the pose I was always going to do. Thank you, Hot Toys. You've done it for me. I don't have to do anything out of the box. I simply remove him and it's all done. If that's the case, then you're going to love this guy. I also do appreciate the weathering down below for his feet. They're even more filthy than the upper torso. Makes perfect sense as he's... Hydra stomping. Again, I'm so sorry. You can actually feel the weathering. It's nice and textural. Then on the underside, some really big sculpted tread. Enough stomper. Moving on to Steve kicking things off with his head sculpt. It looks good. Does it look like an animated Chris Evans? Unfortunately, no, I don't think so, but this is bang on to the show. He looked like this. His ears are sticking out ever so slightly. The skin texture is subtle, but it's still there. Even though this is an animated head sculpt, they've added just a little bit more detail, just like all the scratches on the stomper. I do like that the hair has multiple layers of paint. Plus, these pieces are separate rubbery pieces of plastic. It adds just a little bit more depth. Also, the skin tone match between the very skinny neck and the head sculpt is on point. Earlier on, I did promise a head swap, so here it is. I'm just sorry it's not very good. The only cap head sculpt I could find without a fixed neck to pop onto this body was this one. It came with the Avengers 1 2012 cap, the original, the 1.0, and the likeness and the expression is kind of goofy. Also, the neck connector isn't compatible, so it's literally just floating there, but if you did want to go for a more realistic pre-serum Steve with a larger head and thinner body, yeah, I 
guess this could do the job. Around the back, he does have a removable backpack, maybe for a parachute, but there's nothing in here, not even some padding. The best use I found for it is you can store his spare hands in there and it bulks out the backpack, making it look a little bit more full. That means when you want to change the hands or change the pose, you don't have to go rifling through the box, they're already here. Now, I do like the way it's designed with the two stripes down the middle. There's a little bit of texture to the fabric stitched well. You can also remove the backpack, it's totally up to you. I personally wouldn't, I would just leave it on because if you do take it off, his outfit looks even more simple. It's literally a military green flight suit, nice and baggy because this is pre-serum skinny Steve, he's very very frail looking in this very big jumpsuit, it works beautifully. You do have this kind of knitted jumper with a folded over collar. Now these straps and buckles and the belt, they're all integrated. None of this stuff is removable or adjustable, just the backpack. Coming down to the legs, this poor dude, his clothes are so ill-fitting. But that is bang on, I love the way it looks. You have some proper working pockets, the material continues down. Now it is very clean, but that suits the animated aesthetic, at least for me. His boots are also enormous. The stitching is fully sculpted. There are some laces also sculpted. Then on the underside, some tread. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, Sans Hydra Stomper, here we have Steve, Captain Carter, and Zombie Hunter Spidey. They're all, of course, from What If. Now, this is a pretty slim line for now. I'm hoping it continues and we see more of the characters that were printed on the box for Hydra Stomper. Either way, these three look really good together. Steve is the shortest, followed by Captain Carter, who's relatively tall. Then Zombie Hunter Spidey, who's one big boy. The animated style blends these three really nicely together. The only complaint I have is, why the heck didn't Zombie Hunter Spidey come with a head sculpt? An animated sculpt so these three would have looked even better standing side by side. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how big the Stomper is. It's an absolute monster. It towers over both Captain Carter and Steve. For a more relatable size comparison though, if you have the Hulkbuster, he's about that size. Did you all think I was gonna leave you hanging like that? No, of course not. I'm not that cruel. Here we have Hulkbuster. He's taller than Hydra Stomper just by a bit. He's also a little bit bulkier and a hell of a lot heavier, but quite clearly, they're both Marvel centerpieces. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy, so I'm going to be a touch more careful. Also, due to his size, he's pretty difficult to wrangle on camera, just bear with me. Starting off with the helmet, it's on a hinge and a ball peg, looking up to there, great for flight poses, looking forward just a little. Swivel and pivot side to side. His shoulder pad is movable, it comes out on multiple joints. The arms will go up to there on a double ball peg, going forward and back, and the ball peg also acts as a butterfly forward and back and up and down. You do have swivel at the bicep, double bend on ratchets at the elbow going just past 90, plus a double ball peg for the wrist. Also, his fingers, like we discussed earlier, they're articulated. His waist will swivel, but that's it. His legs are completely fixed in position. No thighs, no knees, no ankles, nothing. These are solid hunks of plastic. As for Steve, starting off with his head sculpt, it's on a fixed neck with a ball peg up top. Looking forward to there, looking back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, they will go forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going the full way, plus a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg, it's a hinge and swivel. The torso does crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot. The legs will go forward on ratchets to there, going out to there, also on ratchets. Swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee getting you just past 90. Then a double ball peg for the ankle, but it's relatively restricted due to the high boot. You 
kind of only get swivel. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is the power pose aspect. I'm really not sure why they did this. The design isn't super complicated, his upper torso is all integrated, so you can't say, well, it's so you can fit Steve inside. Actually, no. Steve crunches down, it's not like his legs go all the way down into the stomper's legs, they don't. That means the final point of articulation before the legs is the waist swivel. The second annoying thing is the integration of Steve. Now, because his legs don't extend into the body of the stomper, he sits really high. Hot toys in the instructions, they show you you need to crunch him down, then slot him in. And in order to close the canopy, they want you to lean him all the way forward. So that means you have to lean him like this, and then, fingers crossed, you can close it up. But I'm still worried about scratching the paint on Steve, so if ever I have it closed, I'll just take him out. The third annoying thing is the display base for the Stomper. I understand it's a flight stand, but couldn't they have given us something else as well? Some kind of platform with some artwork printed on it from the show? Instead, all we get is this, and only Steve gets the proper display base. The first cool thing is how you attach the flight stand. It's pretty clever, very well integrated, and quite sturdy. The first thing you do is remove that panel, exposing a peg port. Then you bring in the display base, plug it in, and now you can pose him mid-flight. The second cool thing is Hot Toys. You've finally done it. Thank you. With the LEDs in the arc reactor and the eyes turned off, he doesn't look dead. They've used this frosted white plastic, which I think is the best way to go. Because like I said, when you turn the LEDs off, the suit still looks alive. The third cool thing is Steve can fit inside. You simply fold his legs up, crunch him in, and... There you have it. There's no need to detach his limbs or remove boots or give us faux half torsos. It's the full figure inside the Hydra Stomper. Wrapping up on Hot Toys Hydra Stomper and Steve Rogers based off their appearance in the Disney Plus animated show Marvel's What If. Going into this, I was excited, but... I wasn't expecting a power pose figure, I thought the Hydra Stomper was going to be poseable. If you're sitting there thinking, hey, wait a second, you just said you like the display base, but you also don't, and then you said you like how Steve can go in, but not how it works, what gives? Well, it's kind of a catch-22. Some of the best parts about this figure are also some of the weirdest and least functional. So while I like them, it's not going to be for everyone. Steve is by far my favorite thing about this set. I've wanted pre-Serum Steve for years. Plus, he's a normal figure. He can fit into the collection a lot easier than the big honkin' Hydra Stomper. As for the Hydra Stomper, it's good, but what's with the legs? Hot Toys, why did you cheap out? The upper torso is articulated, but the legs aren't. It's a power pose. That means you're fixed into that one pose that he comes in, whether you like it or not. I was hoping it would be a full figure, because on the box and on all of the websites where you can buy this set... It simply says Hydra Stomper collectible figure. They really need to dial down their verbiage, cause people like me who just read what was there and rolled with that, you're going to be sorely disappointed when you lift him out of the box and you find his legs are fixed in position. So where does that leave us? Do you get this? Do you not? Well, that's entirely up to you. If you have the space and you want an animated style showstopper, Oh, you can do a hell of a lot worse than the Hydra Stomper, but you could potentially do a lot better as well. I'm talking statues. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.